So starting from the same place? Tambourine's on two third A. Yeah, but, but get rid of the region. So we're, we're not doing Guero now? No, not So we can just start at 39. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so now we're going to give you two bars into 39 instead, because we're not going to do the Guero on Good, this Good, okay. Two bars into 39. Okay, here we go. Schmidt, tell me about your relationship with Jamie. Let's see. 
I met him in probably the mid to early 90s. We would sell out 25 seat coffee shops. And we would just, um, he would always be like, let's play a gig. And then when I'd write scribble on the court changes really fast and then we'd just play it. And that was fun. And we hung out a lot. Were you playing in a band at this time with other people? Or? I think so, yeah. I think I was probably. Yeah, we got this bottle oh. there. Sorry, sorry. He was in a band called Day with Dizzy, and they were on a major label. And uh, you know, um, he just—he was my hero. He had everything that I—I I could have ever thought that I wanted. You know, um, a record deal. Uh, he didn't have to work a regular job. And uh, and then things went badly with uh, with them, and they got dropped from their label. And um, and then he said he wanted to form a band with me. And for me, it was like. You know, being in a band with my hero, you know, the guy that I looked up to musically and I, I just thought was the most amazing musician on the planet wanted to be in a band with me. And so that just blew my mind. We would love to do four track recordings, and eventually we uh, became friends with uh, Ben Vaughn, who was the music, did the music for that 70s show in Third Off of the Sun. He put us on those shows as the prom band. Why do birds <laughs> suddenly appear? <laughs> Every time you are near, just oh like me. Oh my God! It's Maybe like he's singing just for me. <laughs> when we got on that '70s show on Third Rock from the Sun, not only did we, but everybody that was in our lives thought that we were going places. And then we didn't. Absolutely nothing happened, and Hollis and Sops broke up. Schmidt and I joined this band called Arlo, who had just gotten a deal with Sub Pop. Schmidt was playing bass, I was playing drums. And we got to do things in that band that, that Hollis and Stops never got to do. We got to tour with them, and uh, have to see a record come out, and be in stores. And uh, that was great, and it lasted for a while for me. And then I started getting really homesick being on the road, and just wanted to, uh, you know, the fact that I wasn't getting to do my own music uh, started to wear me down. So I chose to just quit the band and, and hang out at home and record on my four track, which I did for about a year and sunk really deep into uh, addiction. And uh, really, it was very painful not getting to do music with Schmed, you know, um, because that would ha had really been the highlight of my life. And the fact that he was off, you know, having success with Arlo, and then Arlo was actually starting to put out records that had old Halston Stop songs that Schmed had written. Um, but, you know, they were coming out on albums, and that was just, that was hard. It was really, really hard um, to swallow. But, um, so I sunk really deep into my addiction, and, uh, and my mom, who I was sharing a house with, uh, eventually left, left me to figure my shit out. And uh, I, I basically couldn't, I couldn't live anymore. You know, I couldn't take care of myself the way, uh, the way that the people in my life that loved me would have liked me to. So I uh, ended up losing the house, and pretty much everybody in my life, you know, went away from me um, because I was just a scumbag, you know. And uh, I ended up sleeping on Schmidt's couch for a little bit. He um, stayed at my house for a little bit, right at, right at the end. I let him stay as long as I could, even though he's probably not a good influence at that point. But um, you know, sometimes it's like. Sometimes it's like someone's in a bad place and you, maybe you shouldn't even really be helping them out by letting them stay. But, you know, if you love somebody and trust somebody, you just do it, you know. If you like somebody, you can't let them, you know, be homeless, you know. So how did that... Hopefully nobody would let me be homeless. How did that come to an end, then? Oh, he just... I let him stay. I had asked my roommates if he could just stay for, like, two weeks. And after his two weeks were up, I had to let him, you know, I had to let him go. It was pretty much, like, the worst time of my life pretty sure <laughs> um, staying on his couch and and him not even you know wanting me around anymore because it just didn't make sense to have a guy around who might steal his shit you know yeah this is where I ended up um, I was taught that you could uh, you can buy bags just by walking down the street down here so what goes on here this is just uh, the life this is like people just hanging out you know, either getting high or just living down here, you know? That was the fucking worst part, is that, is that I saw families down here, you know? And there was like, I was sitting down here, right on this fucking corner, I tried to sell my, uh, 
Yeah, they're not gonna fuck with us. But we should lock the doors. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is like, I had to wait in, in this line to be able to get into the homeless shelter here. I know this guy. Jamie! Andrew? Uh, get me, get me on camera. Uh, and the winner is... <laughs> Mondo, what are you doing, boy? <laughs> They're making a... Making a documentary about... I'm, I'm going to do this album in London and... and uh, okay. And I'm talking about where I came from, you know? Okay. Where I spent some time. Okay. So, yeah, this is Andrew. How you doing, cameraman? How you doing, man? Beautiful. It's Tony. Beautiful. Good, Good to hey, see Tony. you. Hey, Tony. Good luck to you, man. Thanks a lot, well, man. Good to see you. So good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Nice to see a familiar face down here. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see a bunch of them. Down here on this street, I was in this Lakers outfit, and I was trying to figure out a way how I could get more drugs. And I went and I walked up to one of these guys here on the street, and I handed him I handed him uh, my Lakers outfit. It's the only thing I had left. My brother had loaned me this Lakers jersey and Lakers shorts. So that's what I was wearing. And I walked up to a dude, and I handed it to him, and I was like, can you give me dope for this? And he was like, he, uh, he, uh, took it from me, started holding it up in, in, uh, in the street, like, you know, as a car's passing by, and a guy, like, offered to buy it from him. And then, you know, I'm like, are you gonna give me the dope? And, he, and he's like, don't you ever fucking disrespect me! Don't you ever just, you know, got in my face, and I was just, fra like, just a frame, a frail frame of a fucking man at that point, you know? And, um... You know, I didn't get my shit. Yeah, but you're naked now. I'm naked on Skid Row. Because you gave him the Lakers outfit to, for the government. Exactly. I'm naked. I'm, I'm in my boxers now. It's during the summer, so it's hot out. Um, I have my, my socks, and that's it. And that's how, that was my first day on Skid Row. I was afraid, man. I was scared, and I was alone, and my mom had said goodbye. My dad, I'd called him from down here in my boxers saying, Dad, I'm in my boxers, and... He's like, here, talk to your mother, you know, and my stepmom, Sherry, and I talked to her on the phone, and they just wouldn't, they're told not to come get me, to just let me fucking fight through it, you know, that I would steal from them, and I would keep using them, and that I had to find my own way. This is where I slept, and right there on that sidewalk, that was where I was asleep, and um, I slept, and I woke up the next morning, there's rats running by me, and fucking, and a van... They they didn't have a bed for me in this place, so a van pulled up and said, you know, how many days sober do you have? And I was I lied and I said seven, you know. And they're like, you want to go to rehab? And I was like, sure. And they took me up to this fucking rehab in the mountains. It's an all men, you know, uh, five hundred dudes who are all out of uh, all out on Prop Thirty Six, um, basically who get to leave jail a little early if they face their drug problems and go to rehab. So that's what the place was like, and I went there and slowly put my life back together. Born in East LA. Welcome to East LA. Dozier Street. This is Zuma's house. Zuma and Schmidt have been practicing here 20 years in various different bands. Here's Zuma. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Hello. Zuma on bass. This is Zuma's, uh, the house he grew up in, right? Uh, pretty much. Pretty yeah. much. Wait well, until you see this place. I mean, they, nothing really much, much has changed in the last 20 years. After about six months of being sober and into my new life, um, I got this call and it was like, hey, I'm Nathan Duvall. You remember me? I was a big Halston Sobs fan. And I was like, I recognized his voice, but I couldn't, I couldn't place who this guy was. And he's like, hey, I used to have these loft parties. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah. And uh, he's like, I wonder what you've been up to lately. You know, and he explained that he had a publishing company and he had been placing a lot of songs and films, you know, and trailers. And, and advertising, and and uh, and asked me if I would write some stuff in the style of Halston Stop songs for romantic comedy films, and I said sure, and I gave it a shot, and that's what I've been doing for Nathan for the last few years. Every once in a while, using Schmed on a few things. Pretty soon, I started submitting him old Halston Stop songs, thinking these things will never see the light of day. I might as well get them placed. Um, 
So I submitted him some songs and that kind of restoked a flame in him to, you know, to give us a publishing deal. He was like, hey, you know, I want you guys to make a whole record of Holliston's Hop songs um, and we'll get them placed in romantic comedy films. So Schmidt and I recorded uh, the album in our studios. My buddy Thomas engineered it and uh, made this whole record where he and I played all the instruments. You know, I played drums and sang and played some guitar. Schmidt played bass and all the piano stuff and keyboards. And we did string arrangements together and horn arrangements and and uh, made this uh, amazing sounding record that we thought and we submitted it to Nathan he sat with it for about a month and called us and said look man we got to do this thing for real I want to fly you guys to England to Air Studios you know, owned by Sir George Martin uh, and you know wanted to have us record it with the full symphony and choirs and do the whole thing right <laughs> Hi Nathan. <laughs> Nothing. Are you here? I think we need to turn the bass down. Okay, we're gonna get you. I know, I know. Nathan's here. That sounded good, guys. Is Jennifer here? She is. She's fitting right in. We got her chewing tobacco spitting in the tune. Sure, yeah, I can pass out. I have everyone's uh, plane tickets and I have a car, uh, car information for you guys for your pickup and delivery to the plane. They're going to have a sign, Halston Stops? Yeah, they're going to put up a sign saying Halston Stops when you arrive. Uh, I'm leaving on a jet plane and I'm not going to sing a melody, but I am leaving on a jet plane. I actually know when I'll be back. I want to pick you up on that. Right on time. What do you think, guys? It looks adequate. Can get up here. It'll do. I can't believe, uh, I can't believe where we are. I can't believe that, uh, you know, putting pen to, pen to paper and I'll let you land you in a room like this. It's like overkill. It's incredible. I love it. I can't yeah. wait to play. What do you think? I hear what it sounds like. I think it's got great windows, nice woodwork, solid floors. <laughs> I feel good. I feel secure. Yeah. We gotta stay in class protected so someone doesn't break a bike. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Hit that, that brown like note. if you're throwing a beer can at your beer bottle of drummer, you might actually hit the beer. <laughs> I think it's more of an acoustic. Right now I'm in trouble. <laughs> I think it's an acoustic stage. <laughs> It's a little different than the garage you think in East LA. Yeah.
Hi Jill, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Excellent. Yeah. Number two. Yes. Number two, please. Astronaut. So we're just going to play click and track. Just to make sure they yeah, you just have a listen first of all. think you'd be here? No, I was just uh, one of those guys that liked the records with the orchestras on them, the choir, like like ELO Out of the Blue and ABBA and Queen and all the big albums. So everybody knew that I, everybody knows I like that kind of music and I would just, you know, try and stack everything up on the four track or at home on my computer and I would do fake violins and people would always say, you should use real strings. And it's like, oh yeah, I never thought of that when I couldn't pay my rent last month. I should have hired a string section. Right. But um, yeah, I was just I always used fake strings and was just an appreciator of the music that has a lot of stuff on it. And now seeing here, it's like I just can't even believe it. It's just amazing. I can't believe it's true. It's just you know, life can um, go, you can have ups and downs in life because there's been times where I've been totally bummed out and I felt like that maybe I'd have to go and you know get a job 
flipping burgers, and then next thing you know, you can be in here doing it. When you were on Skid Row, if I told you you were going to come to this place behind you That's, this and make a record. That's happy, yeah. Uh, Turn around and look at this place. Uh, I'm glad you didn't tell me that back then because I would have fucked it up. Part of me feels like it doesn't even look real. Like, this is just crazy to me. Seeing music right now with my name on it, you know. I also feel bad about being cynical in the past because I can be a real cynical bastard. What I always tried to do is I only had the means of playing through a, with, a, with a garage band. So I would always try and get it across as best I could, you know. So that even if there weren't a lot of instruments, at least I felt that the, with the piano chords, the piano chords that get it across, I could get that feeling. And then just hearing it coming back from, from so many people in the choir and the orchestra is just totally crazy. But I always considered myself to be like kind of like a budget, like kind of a, a poor man's one of those guys, like, like the guys that does the music that I like. Like I was to be like a like a thrift store version of it, you know? So, and, and I would just hope that if I, I always told myself that if I practiced enough with the fake strings and if I just kept it up, that maybe one day I'd be able to use the real strings, the real orchestra. But, you know, sometimes during tough times, you feel like you're lying to yourself. You know, you wonder, you know, is it ever is it really gonna happen? And you just gotta do it because you love it, you know? It's like George Martin was driving by one day and he was like, hmm, yeah. That's what I want. Every once in a while, I just have these moments where I'm sitting. <laughs> I'm sitting at the uh, control desk in Studio One, and I'm looking out, and it's like I can't even believe what the fuck I'm seeing. Let's walk down here. Let's get the whole. This must be the George Martin uh, driveway. This is the George Martin Memorial driveway. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Damn. Look at how they've installed all that plexiglass and yeah. stuff over there. <laughs> I think we're in someone's driveway. Yeah. We're gonna we're about to get shot right yeah. here. Ready? Okay. Does it treat me like your friends have said you do or my friends? Oh. Oh, it's my friends. My, my bad. Oh, but no, that's what he was singing. Oh. I think of the rough oh. one it was your friends, but the, the, does the choir sing in that? No, no. Oh, okay. Your mind was made of blue Your mind was made of blue But if that's the case My heart could use the pasting too
relationships with the different ones like C to E minor, B to C to E minor. They're like friends that I've known since I was a kid. With like October Dream, I pretty much wrote it right at the beginning with two notes at all times. changes the, um, the minor four. My, my favorite bands at all times was always ELO because every now and then I'd hear that minor four chord change which is like on the, this would be. kid I got an ELO album because somebody said you should listen to ELO and, and Jeff Lynne would use that minor four chord change on, on almost all of his songs on every record it's, and I just loved it. I just loved that, that chord change. And um, that's pretty much, um, I almost worked that chord change into almost everything. More highlights for me it was been um, doing vocals in that room and having them come easier than they've ever come and sound better than they've ever sounded and then to find out you know <laughs> four days into recording that it's the same room where a computer was recorded you know the fact is we made a great sounding record on our own you know and and now we get to do that to the fullest scale that you can possibly do it you know I mean there's no you can't get any bigger than what we're doing right now what else could you do you know have a fucking UFO land you know in the middle of the hall that's like the only thing that you could do to top the recording okay he's a threat uh, if he had all his hair, hair he's better looking and didn't so smell, I'd seriously hate his guts. Okay. Hey, Justin. Yeah. So, so more you can, um, I mean, I know this is, is tough, but in, in the opening, um, you were just uh, struggling a little bit with uh, you know, the swing and being confident when you, uh, you know, mainly with the kick drum. Like, the more you can just, uh, you know, really make this one dance, the, the more everyone's going to really feel this. Okay. Right on, I actually just went in there and told him to, because uh, in the practices, uh -huh. it had been uh, kind of like dragging a little bit, like uh -huh. it was, the, the swing was a little too prevalent, so I was like telling him to play a little more. Well, I guess meet somewhere in between, huh, yeah. Justin? <laughs> work, work it out. <laughs>
this dream where we meet the same time every year on this Halloween Eve. But you're already there, and it's good to be true, and this ought to be nice. Cause I'm falling for you once or twice. met all we wanted to do was party and have fun and play music and hang out with girls and then later during the bad period what partying kind of became where we both wanted to do as little as possible and I've seen this some to a lot of people where at first you're out tearing around and drinking and playing shows coffee shops and getting stuff done and then everybody I see a lot of people ending up in a place where you don't want to do anything and you just stay home and you do as little as possible, you get your rent as small as possible, you figure out ways to make a little bit of money, and you just kind of end up doing nothing and just watching TV and... How's this look? It, no, you're not getting that stuff on the bottom. Sorry. And um, I, think, I think we were both really good at figuring out ways to not do anything, and then later it was time to do something. Who gets to do this? You know, there's a band, you know, from 10 years ago who breaks up, you know, and goes on all this this huge journey through life and then gets to make a record you know of all of a lot of those songs you know together by not gigging you know at all and uh, and just continually making music but I mean, the music has lasted and that's that's what's great it's lasted with Nathan it's always been in his heart and you know it's always been stuff that he and I would have liked to see out there so now we get that chance <laughs>
That's better, right? She knows. 